G Outdoors. I'm your host, Glenn. And today we are going to be checking out my new Roman Ventures Rainfly. Now, this is a 13 foot by 10 foot rainfly. And I think outside of those um, rainflies that have got the, you know, the doors, which are pretty much floating floorless tents, this is probably one of the biggest rainflies you can buy on the market these days. I'm quite sure some of you DIY and make your own gear guys have probably made something large enough to cover your tarp, your car, your RV, boat, and the family next door. But I grip digress. This one is 13 foot by 10 foot. And I just got this, and this is the first time I'm going to set it up, so let's see how it goes. And fortunately for us today, it is raining a little bit, and this evening is supposed to rain a lot. So, I'm going to be able to set this up, put my hammock in out, spend the night out in the backyard here, and see just how well this does for me, okay? Alright, so first off, let's have a look at this bag. Nice and small, and it is remarkably light. Um, I think the official weight is something around 26 ounces, but it feels a little bit more than that to me. I haven't actually weighed it. But it is very light, it is very compact. The question, of course, and many of you already know this, is yes, it's compact when you first buy it, but can you get the thing back in the bag after you've used it? So we'll see about that as well. All right, let's get this thing open. All right, so what do we got here? We have got this little baggie, which sounds like it has the stakes and guy lines in there. So let's see what we got. Okay. We got a ball with a tensioner on the end. Okay. And we got a smaller one. Another smaller one. And you see here. ground for now. Now we've got four stakes. No, no, wait. Six stakes. Now these stakes are nice. They're very easy to pound into the ground. Um, they don't bend really. I mean, you have to really work to bend these things. What I don't like about this kind of stake though, it's that uh, triangular one. Dirt gets stuck in here and then you have to kind of clean it out. Um, but I'm going to use these anyway and uh, see how they do. Okay. All right, let's see what else we've got in the way of guidelines here. All right, so... Got lines all over the place here. Okay, let's see. All right, so we have a bundle about that size. Another bundle about the same size. And we've got four, five, six small bundles. And then a really long bundle. Now, what I've not seen in this bag so far are instructions, but I'm guessing these small ones are for the guy lines to take the tarp down to the ground. These two small ones, or medium sized ones, are to go from the end of the tarp to the tree. This long one is if I want to go from tree to tree with just one piece. So I have, I think, a few options here of rigging this up. So that's kind of good. No instructions. Now, for those of you who are just getting a tarp for the first time, you may want instructions. Fortunately for you, there are videos like this and many, many others that will show you how to set up a rain fly, okay? Um, I've done enough rain flies that I really don't need instructions. And let's be honest here, you all know darn well if you've seen my other videos, I'm probably going to rig this up, modify it, and rig it up a completely different way next time you see this um, on film, okay? All right, so first off, let's see. If it's arrived in good condition, oh, it looks like it. Oh, this, yeah, this is huge. This is huge. Love it. Okay, now, what this has at the ends, yeah, I'm going to bring this in close so you can see. See those connections there? These are really kind of cool because you put your line through there, and what it will do, you can pull it through one and then out the other, and it will tighten as you pull it through. And you kind of flip it up to release it. I'll show you when I get this set up, and you can see that firsthand. But I'm glad they got these. I like these. These are very convenient. All right. 
I think what I'm going to do is go for the um, two medium bundles from tree to tarp, from tree to tarp, instead of the big bundle which goes from tree to tree because my two trees here, I think I've mentioned them before, they're like 27 feet apart. And then I've got to get around the tree, which is at least another six or seven feet each. Yeah, so that's pretty long. And looking at this bundle, it's large, but I don't think it's going to... I don't think it's going to make it all the way around, um, just judging by the size of the bundle. If I remember correctly from the uh, website where I bought this, I think it said it was 30 meters, so roughly 30 yards might make it. I don't know. Well, I'll try the uh, two medium bundles first. All right, so let me just pause this for a minute. I'll get started on that, and then uh, we'll get into the details, okay? All right, hang tight now. All right, so attaching to the tree, I've just done a slippery knot there, tied it around. I'm probably going to swap that out and use something um, like a bowline or actually, you know what I'll do? I'll just get myself a little uh, carabiner, clip that on the end with a bowline and then clip it onto the line here to go down to the uh, rain fly. That'll be quick and easy instead of having to tie a knot. When I'm out camping sometimes, you know, your fingers get cold and wet and you know, tying knots is a pain sometimes. All right, so let's take this on down here to this little part here. Let's see if we can get that in focus. Um, this little plastic dealy bob, there we go, is a wonderful little device. Basically, you pull this to tighten it. When you want to loosen it, you pull up here, and boom, all the tension comes out. Let me show you that to tighten it. And it grips that really tight. That holds it very, very tight. Yeah, I like that. That's great. Now, the part that I don't understand is these little dealy bobs here. I'm not sure what the heck I'm supposed to do with those. I may just take those off. But if one of you guys or gals on the, online know what these are for, let me know. Appreciate it. All right, let's get the rest of this set up and see how it looks. So I've got it rigged up using the line from there to the tree, line from that end to the tree. And as you can see, it's come out pretty low because the uh, stakes pulling it down taut have pulled it down lower than I'm uh, really comfortable with. The other thing to notice is this. This is a 13 foot uh, rain fly from that corner there to this corner here. It is not 13 feet from the top end there to the top end over there. That's nine feet, about seven inches. So it's not the 13 feet I thought it was. Um, if I look at the photographs, I'm quite sure that if I look at them again, I realize, oh, 13 feet total. My thinking in my head was 13 feet from the end to the other end, not 13 feet from that corner to that corner. Okay, so, so that's something to keep in mind if you're thinking about purchasing one of these rain flies. All right, so I've got it rigged up like that. That's too low for me. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make some adjustments here and see if I can make it higher up, more comfortable for me to put my hammock under and also see how my hammock is gonna fit under that. Stand by, I'll get that all rigged up and I'll show you what I've done, okay? So I've gone back to my standby method. I've got some power cord up there and two prussic knots. I love the prussic knot. I'm not even sure if you can really call it a knot, because really all you do is just wrap a, a loop around the string and pull it one way, pull it the other way. It doesn't move, but you can slide it. Anyway, I've gone to using that method. It's much higher, as you can see. Also, I'm not using the middle um, guy line on the tarp either. So let me bring the camera in close and show you what I've done here to make this work the way I want it to work. And uh, then I'm gonna get my hammock set up, I think, and see how things fit. All right, hang on now. All right, so here is the uh, bright red paracord bowline at one end, strung through, wrapped around the tree. Very straightforward. Okay, coming on down here, the line. And there is the classic Prusik knot Tied there, and then a twig there, just the marlin spike kind of effect, hooked through right down in here. Okay, you can pan this around so you can get a better view. 
All right. Now, one thing I like about this uh, tarp is it's got this nice double stitched edge on it. You see that there? It's very sturdy. I like that. Now, one thing I've noticed is that these little tensioner things here, if there's a use for them, that's great. But they're kind of redundant. Don't really need them. Because these little things here, if I want it loosened, I just pull up like that. To tighten it, I just pull that top string there and it grips it and it's nice and tight so i don't need another tensioner i've got one right there and it works really well the stakes the nice thing with these triangular stakes you can get in there real close so you can see that you can stamp those things into the ground you can just stamp them in the ground without worrying about bending them like the uh, straight ones do this is the middle guy line I've not bothered with it, nor on the other side, because as you can see, I've got some pretty good tension all the way across. Now there is a bit of a flop there, and if it was high winds, I would probably use that middle uh, guy line. I'd need it, I think. Let's look at the inside. As you can see, I'm holding my camera phone here at uh, face height. I've got enough room here to walk through and my head barely touches. At this end, wrapped around the tree, you know, lashing around there and try to slippery, tie a slippery knot there. Again, pretty straightforward stuff, nothing fancy. No hardware used in this case. Bright red string going down to the other prusik knot right there. Can we get that focused? There we go, that's a little bit better. I like my prusik knots, very, very handy knot. And then down to the corner there, also buried into the ground with the stake. So I think I'll go and go with this configuration. I'm gonna set up my hammock now and see how it fits. And uh, hopefully we're good. Well, that nine foot length of this, Ring fly is, as you can see, insufficient to work with the length of my hammock. It's sticking out of the ends. Hmm. Well, let's see if I can be creative and come up with a better solution. Hang on. Well, not quite the way it's designed to be used, but um, so what? It works. So what I did, I took the, uh, the rain fly and basically turned it diagonal and did put it into the diamond configuration. Now, of course, it's a rectangle, so you end up with kind of that a skewed point to it. I'll put the, uh, get, take the camera off the tripod in a minute and come in close and show you the details. But as you can see, it's plenty long enough to cover my hammock from end to end with some uh, room to spare, which is nice because um, if I'm out camping and it's raining, I can put my um, backpack hanging from my uh, straps get it off the ground and hang up other things there as well and still be covered by the tarp. It looks kind of neat too, doesn't it? All right, let me uh, bring the camera in close and show you the details. Hang on. All right, so still using the Prusik knot system because that just works best for me. This is actually one of the corners here that is supposed to be down by the ground. Turned it, made it diagonal, went that way. My hammock, as you can see, has got a lot of room underneath the rain fly and plenty of room under there. Didn't use this connection point here. This one snugged in pretty close to the ground. I did use this connection point here and the one on its opposite over on that side over there. I'll show you in a minute. Because what this does, it pulls it this way so as to be able to get my little um, rod there covered. Because I kind of do that spreader bar thing that 
I know some hammock enthusiasts consider spreader bars to be the work of the devil, but they work well for me. I'm going to get a close-up there on the whole prussic knot thing there with a the twig. The nice thing about camping in the forest is always twigs. And a long, long way view. See, so lots of room in there. And that's the other connection point there. And here's the other one, kind of diagonal from its uh, partner on the other side. And again, that enables me to keep that underneath the tarp. That little yellow bag there, that's for the, uh, that's for the hammock. The whole hammock goes into that. Now, there's one thing about this. These lines here. They show up pretty good on this camera, but if you're looking at them, even on the camera, you'll notice you get down to the ground, that line there pretty much disappears. It becomes invisible. Um, very easy to miss. Now, if you've got your flashlight, you're shining your flashlight right on at, at night, I think this is reflective and you'll be able to see it. But during the daytime, or it's just rainy, or it's just kind of dusk, you wouldn't see those lines. And I'm worried that perhaps those are not the best things to have because, uh, you trip over them because you wouldn't be able to see them. So I may mod that. But the mod I've set up here with this rainfly I think works pretty good. I'm pretty happy with the, the length of it. Now tonight it's supposed to rain, so we'll see how it goes. And I'll report back in the morning and I'll let you all know how it turned out. And I can say that in this configuration, the um, Roman Ventures uh, rainfly served its purpose perfectly. Bone dry, rain couldn't even get me because the recovery would be so far that the rain wasn't able to get in at all. Um, lots and lots and lots of room under there in this configuration. Uh, I've got lots of headroom, I've got lots of room inside, and lots of room at the ends of my hammock. So the last test, the last test I've got to do now is can I get it back into its original bag? That is a key test. I'm going to go get some breakfast right now, and after that, I'll try that test and see how we do, and then I will give my final review and recommendation of the Rowan Ventures rain tarp, or rain fly. All right, see you after I've had some breakfast, okay? So, before I do the takedown portion of this and see if it actually fits back into the bag it came out of, um, I thought I'd point out a couple of things. Number one, the guy lines here, I thought they were reflective, they're not. They're not reflective at all. So I'll be definitely swapping those out. Um, because, yeah, in the dark, those uh, guy lines are basically just trip hazards waiting to happen. So I'll be swapping those out for something a little bit brighter and probably reflective. Okay. Now, um, I'd also want to show you just how much room I've got in here with my full hammock set up with everything in there. The sleeping bag, my reflective pad, and all my other gunk and junk and uh, show you how much room I've got in there, all right? So let's hang on a second, I'm gonna turn the camera around. All right, so there it is. There's all my bags things come in. And this is my setup with uh, Reflectix pad, hammock, sleeping bag, etc. And as you can see, I've got a lot of room here to walk around. This Rainfly, very roomy, very roomy indeed. I'm very happy with that. You might want to see the um, kind of foul weather kind of configuration if you were using this tarp. What I've got here, I've got the uh, corner right down close to the ground. It's about uh, three inches off the ground. There goes my cat. And on the other side, I've done the same. Um, and what this still does, it gives me a lot of room inside the hammock, but because it's down so close to the ground, um, the rain, even if it's blowing, isn't really going to get into me. Uh, there's another way to do this, and that's the porch um, style. I'm going to set that up as well so you can check that out too. Hang on. So this is the uh, porch style that you can do with a rainfly. In this case, this uh, Roman's Venture uh, rainfly, the porch style is really kind of nice because this is a huge rainfly. 130 square feet. So when you set up a porch like this, you have got a lot of room to be under, out of the rain, and cook up your meal or sit or whatever you want to do. 
Um, let me bring the camera in a little bit close and show you exactly what I mean. Hang on. So this is the porch method. All I've done is taken my hiking pole, wrap the guy line around there a couple of times, and then down to the ground and uh, staked off there. Okay, pretty straightforward, nothing to it. What's really cool is how much room I have here. I sit down in my hammock here, and I've got all this room here. And I'm standing up, my head's not touching anything. Let me back this up a little bit so you can see how much room is there. It's pretty big. It's very nice like that. I'm looking forward to taking this out and seeing how this works in the, out in the actual backpacking kind of adventures. Because I know I'm probably going to be the envy of some of my uh, other rainfly and hammocker campers. All right, so now final test. Can the rainfly fit back into the bag from which it came? Sometimes that's just not possible. Let's see if it is in this case. Alrighty. One thing about this material is that the uh, underside, the, the side that's really kind of the waterproofing side, is slightly tacky. Not sticky, just kind of tacky. So sometimes it's hard to get things shoved into this bag, which is made out of the same material. It kind of grips against each other. All looking good so far. this much left to go, which seems like a lot, but this material is very, very thin. And there we go. Now, there's still a little bit of room left in there. I could put in the uh, guy line and stuff as well and the stakes. All right. So the Ruin Ventures Rainfly, my final word on this. I'm going to give it a three out of five on the star chart kind of rating system. Um, the actual Rainfly itself, really well made, very waterproof, very large. I'm very, very happy with the Rainfly itself the way I had it configured. If it was just that, I would give it a 5 out of 5. However, the guidelines that it came with, non-reflective, trip hazards, lose a marker. The way it's supposed to be set up, that is in kind of the rectangular, 5 feet on one side, 5 feet on the other side, and a total length of 13 feet, slightly deceptive. The actual length in that configuration is only 9 feet, lose a star there. So if you're looking for if you're looking for a rainfly that if you configure it the way I did gives you tons of room, kind of the diamond configuration and it's much much longer than your hammock and you've got room there to hang your backpack and set up a nice porch and all that kind of stuff, this is a good buy because uh, you can set it up the way I did it and have all that room and be very, very happy with it. And the price is really very, very good, especially compared to a lot of other rainflies out there. The material is extremely you know, waterproof. The construction is very, very good. I'm very happy with that. However, if you're looking for a rainfly where you can just take it straight out of the bag and set it right up just the way it came out of the bag, you're going to be a little bit disappointed, okay? So for um, Roman Ventures, if uh, anyone from your company is watching this uh, video and, and you know, has some uh, comments, questions, or anything, please feel free to contact me and uh, we'll talk about your Rainfly. I did give the Rainfly itself excellent top marks, but the other things that came with it brought that down. Okay. All right, so this has been Glenn from MPT Outdoors. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope this is uh, giving you something to think about when you're picking out your next Rainfly. And as always, 
Oh, wait, the subscribe button. Did you click the subscribe button? Click the subscribe button. Do that right now. Yeah, and give me a thumbs up too. That'd be great. Thanks. All right, hope to see you out on the trail. Enjoy this beautiful outdoors.